All right, this is John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today, have another exciting episode for you. And I'm here in my backyard garden, sitting uh, next to my pepper bed. In this bed, which is approximately four feet by eight feet, I got eight different varieties of peppers and four plants of each variety. And I've segregated them out. Yes, separating my yellow from my red peppers, man. But anyways, what this episode is about is uh, growing different varieties of peppers and the one you're gonna wanna avoid growing in my humble opinion. <laughs> so every year what I enjoy doing is growing many different varieties of peppers as much as I like, uh, I don't know, uh, cayenne peppers or even better yet, the pimento peppers or even better yet, I love the pepperoncini peppers. I always like to experiment because you know, only through experimentation in your garden and in other things in life Will you find new and exciting ways to do things that are maybe even more fun and better than ways you've done them in the past? So this year, you know, straight up, I'm growing eight different varieties in this bed and in my other beds, I probably have over 50 varieties total this year of different varieties of peppers easily, probably pushing 60 actually, to see which ones are going to grow better, which ones are going to yield more, and more importantly, which ones I'm going to enjoy eating the most. <laughs> because there's no point in growing something that you don't enjoy. While I enjoy all peppers, you know, not all peppers are created equal. Some have amazing flavors and some just have some passe, you know, plain bland flavors. So in this bed, you guys could see like this plant right here, just loaded up, man. I mean, this is a hot banana pepper. All these guys were planted at the same time. This pepper bed actually was planted out first before all my other pepper beds in my garden. And this is, uh, depending on the plant, some of them are really productive and some of them are not so productive. So this hot banana looks like it's loaded up. I don't know if you guys could see over on this one. Uh, not quite. You could see a pepper pingling, peppering or something. Right over here somewhere. That's actually a sweet banana. And that plant is also loaded up fairly well. It looks like it got about a dozen peppers on there. The next plant that's doing quite well in this bed is right here. It's a jalapeno pepper. And it's got at least a dozen little peppers on the plant and you know these plants will grow for many more months i mean right now they're like pushing two three feet tall and yes these are in the aqua jet bed these peppers are growing far better than the peppers i grew last year with an ir standard drip irrigation system so before you poo poo ideas you know you got to see the results and these stems are thicker i mean the growth is much more rambunctious and the production, in my opinion, is more than I've gotten last year. So that's something to say, whether that's because of the AquaJet system, which I think is partially responsible, but also I'm using better soil this year than I did have used in previous years. Plus it's of course amended to the hilt with all the good stuff that I like to put in. So now we're gonna share with you guys the pepper that I believe you guys should never grow. And they're right here. They're onto the edge of the bed. We got a red bell, yellow bell, and another red bell. And uh, the reason simply why you guys should not grow these, in my humble opinion, is because while these plants are huge, they're like three feet tall. I mean, this guy's pushing, you guys can't even see that on the video, three feet tall, massive amounts of leaves, nice large leaves on these peppers, nice and healthy plants in the same bed that I have, you know, plants that got a dozen fruits on them. These guys are not yet even putting out. They started to put out the buds that are almost going to open, go to flower and then actually hopefully put on some fruit for me. Uh, the red pepper on the end actually got a uh, caterpillar attack, so maybe it wasn't quite as healthy and attracted, you know, some pests, whereas the other guys are doing quite well. I mean, these stalks are really nice and thick. I mean, these are like little mini trees, man. I've never seen peppers grow this well for me. But, I mean, there's simply no fruit on this plant. Now, of course, if you check the plant tag, you know, on the back of every plant tag, it's going to tell you, you know how long how many days before you're gonna get fruit it says 70 to 80 days and if we go over to the hot banana pull the tag out that's why I put the tag so I know which ones I planted plus I can read the info 75 days after planting so you know based on this fact that the sweet banana or the hot banana has like a dozen peppers on it ready this guys don't have any you know not a good sign and you know I have grown standard bells many years in the past just to kind of keep experimenting to see maybe the soil's not right maybe this but when i'm growing so many other varieties of peppers and they're really doing good and these guys are still not producing and you know when i when they do produce and have produced for me in the past they might produce a few peppers they're not pepper abundance which i like a lot so number one 
you know, they're not producing yet, they're really healthy, they're taking up space, I could be planting a variety that would actually produce me more fruit, more peppers to eat earlier, and plus, you know, peppers are going to taste a lot better. It's quite sad when people think peppers, they think bell peppers immediately because that's what's commonly sold in grocery stores. To me, the standard bells have like very little flavor. Yeah, they get heavy and big and stuff. And that's probably good for commercial trade because they, they sell by the pound, but they don't have a lot of flavor. And they take an extended period of time to produce and they don't produce a lot from what I've seen in my front yard and backyard garden. So next, I told you guys what you shouldn't grow as a pepper. Now I want to show you guys just maybe some other varieties that are doing really well in my garden this year to show you guys some of the ones I will grow more next year. So one of my favorite peppers that I'm growing this year is this guy. Now yes, this plant may look small, but what many of you guys don't realize is that this plant was planted probably like at least two months after the other guys you saw. And check it out, I mean this guy, if I just move back some of these leaves here, this guy already has fruit already ripening up. This is actually just known as a sweet pepper tangerine dream days of harvest 70. This guy is super abundant and still putting on more flowers so that it could create more fruit for me. Yeah, tangerine dream, one of my favorites currently this year. Let's look at a few others. So here's another pepper that's doing excellent this year. This is actually a Japanese variety. It's actually called the Fushimi pepper. And as you guys can see, I mean this thing, there's not even a lot of leaves on this plant here. But this thing is loaded to the hilt with peppers. These are long um, red peppers here. This one actually is about ripe. Let's go ahead and pick it and try it on the camera. Hopefully it's not a super hot pepper here. Wow, man. <laughs> Grown in the rock dust. This must taste like 10 times better than the bell peppers you get at the store. Nice pepper flavor. Fruity yet sweet yet complex at the same time. Wow. This pepper is a bomb. Loaded to the hilt. Tastes amazing. You know, I mean, think about it. I wish I planted this guy in place of those bell peppers. I'd be eating a lot more Fushimi peppers right now. So another variety that's doing quite well right now, you guys can't see. I mean, some of these plants are really tall and this guy's a bit shorter. He kind of fell over. So I just staked all these guys up recently. You guys can't see all the fruit on here, but this thing is probably my number one most loaded plant with peppers. And it produces a delicious pepper. Let's see if I can go ahead and find a ripe one. Oh, here's a ripe one. It's actually already drying all the plant here. Here it is. This is known as a pepperoncini pepper. You guys, when you guys were a kid, you might have had pickled pepperoncinis that were green. And yes, you can pick them unripe and pickle them. But I prefer to pickle them when they're completely ripe or just eat them fresh out of hand. These guys have an amazing flavor. Mmm. I was already dry on the vine quite good. I'm going to rip that guy open. Man, such an amazing flavor in a small amount of pepper. Now you can also just, you know, peppers, if you have too many of them, I like to dry them like I would sun-dried tomatoes and save them for the winter. Let's go ahead and look at one more variety of pepper that I'm growing that's doing quite well already early, this early in the season. All right, you guys got hashtag pepper envy. All right, so we're looking at another one of my plants that's actually doing quite well. And it's uh, this guy right here. Some of these plants, you know, have actually plenty of peppers. But this one's particularly loaded up with some peppers to eat. And it's called the, let's see, Corbasi pepper. I've never grown this one before. It's actually quite rare. You'll never go to a nursery to find these, although you can find the seeds online. And uh, they're all in different stages. Let me go ahead and try to pull these guys back. You guys can see in there. I mean, this guy is just loaded up with peppers in different stages and colors. So I always want to encourage you guys actually to let your peppers fully ripen before harvesting. In this case these peppers turn from like a, a greenish to a you know yellow to like an orange and then finally uh, to the beautiful vivid red color we have here. They're quite long and uh, now we're gonna get to try one for the first time. Mmm, not quite as good as the uh, the Fukushimi or whatever, but it's a decent pepper. Hopefully I'll be uh, getting some more ripening, but it's a decent pepper. Probably not the best for the flavor, but this is our early season pepper, so we'll see how these uh, other ones uh, ripen up a little bit later, but I will know that I will have lots of peppers to eat coming up real soon 
I mean, my pepper beds are abundant and they're one of the best crops I grow here in the desert. So here's the last shot of my pepper bed. This area is doing quite well. Now these guys are pretty small. I had a tomato that kind of came up on its own and they kind of shaded some plants out. So that's why these guys might be small or these guys might just be smaller plants in general. This guy, as you guys can see, we have lots of little peppers on there. It's actually called the Chili Chill Hybrid Chili. And so that's actually quite abundant in peppers. And this guy in front doesn't have so many peppers, but they got um, a bunch of them on there. And it's actually called the Little Dickens Pepper. So it's a cute little one. Now, if you go to your local nursery to buy plants, for the most part, you're, you might just find the bell peppers there. And once again, I don't recommend growing bell peppers. So the question is, where do you get your peppers? So if you want to grow some of these different and you know, uh, unique heirloom varieties, you pretty much got to start the seeds yourself. So if you're interested in getting some of the pepper varieties that I've grown, it's quite unfortunate that if you go to your local nursery or big box store to buy pepper plants, they don't have that many varieties. In recent years, you know, uh, they're getting more varieties and different varieties, but you're, they're not going to get the wide spectrum of some of these heirloom and rare varieties that I'm growing here. So if you want to grow them yourself, you pretty much need to start um, you know, from seed and buy seeds, uh, whether you start from seeds or actually order plants online like I did this year. All these, the majority of my peppers this year, 50 plus varieties are actually from uh, this company here, chiliplants.com, which are doing great work to preserve the chili heritage and all the different heirloom um, and um, rare varieties that you can't find anywhere else and you're only gonna know how they grow and how they taste if you try it so I really want to over all else in this video I really want to encourage you guys to experiment with new and different varieties because I guarantee it you will learn about new varieties that you love better by the taste and that will even grow better than some of the varieties you are now one of the things I'm never gonna stop doing is experimenting in the garden and I really want to encourage you guys to experiment in the garden as well the final thing I'd like to say is I always want to encourage you guys to harvest your peppers when they're completely ripe. Peppers in their Solanaceae family and the peppers do have you know, more toxins in them naturally occurring when the peppers are green. All the green peppers you find at the supermarket will basically turn into a color, a red, yellow, or orange pepper if they're left on the vine longer. And that's why they're usually half the price or less because they take much less time to uh, produce than the other peppers that take a lot more longer to produce. But you can have your pepper and eat it too by growing some of these varieties that I've learned that will produce sooner rather than later. And because they're producing sooner, they're gonna produce sooner. And then also they're gonna to continue to produce for a longer period of time because they are producing for me sooner. So I'm looking forward to several months of some delicious heirloom pepper eating. Thanks to once again, the chiliplants.com. Be sure to check their website, chiliplants.com. You can check out their catalog order seeds now for next year. Also get on their email list and also you could actually request they send you guys a paper catalog so that you guys could read through and read all the different varieties and they have cool little charts that tell how long the peppers are, how big the plants get and where they're from and if they're mild, medium or hot. Most of the peppers I'm growing are uh, mild, uh, sweet and I got a few mediums in there. So I'm also growing this year Smoking Ed's Carolina Reaper pepper which is the hottest pepper guaranteed by the Guinness Book of World's Records as the hottest pepper on the planet. And actually that guy, that's uh, it's flowered and it's starting to bud out and starting to make some baby fruits, but it's not yet producing. So, you know, if you want high yielding, that's not it. I'm just kind of growing it for fun because that's probably gonna burn on the way in and burn on the way out, if you know what I mean. And I'm not looking forward to that. In any case, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep on growing. Also, I did start an Instagram account. You want to check me out there at Instagram.com slash growing your greens where you'll see a lot of, uh, you know, behind the scenes footage sometimes of what I'm growing in the garden, what I'm doing in the garden, you know, what some of my plants look like, what I'm eating, all this kind of cool stuff. Instagram.com slash growing your greens. Anyway.